You're going to learn an awful lot, but let's learn some more with you okay. right now. Paul. I'm looking forward to it. Something else you uh, say the reason that you're running is the terrible economy. Right. Yes, we've had we have a very difficult economy. Both sides have played a big role in making that I happen. agree with that completely. I think the Republicans are equally culpable in this whole thing. I think the Democrats are more proficient at getting it done, but the Republicans have failed us as well. So how can you go in and change history? Easy, because I'm a principled leader. I do what my principles tell me to do. It has nothing to do with what's convenient for me or what I think is right. I live by historical principles that have proven over the course of time to establish and maintain sustainability. My father taught me how to invest. He told me that I cannot spend all the money that I take in, but I need to save a portion of it and then reinvest it in vehicles that would work for me. While I was going to work as a carpenter, I would have monetary vehicles, other vehicles that would make money for me. That's a sustainable principle that has been throughout the history of time, right? Yep. It works. You don't, you don't. But I don't know any don't, government that's ever done that. Oh, any government. Well, that's not true. There are, I'll give you a good example right now. There's Chris Collins in Erie, New York. He's a lean guy like me. Chris mm -hmm. has been a business guy, owns nine companies, never been in political office before, went in, became the county executive for Erie, New York, and is turning the place around, working with unions and turning the place around. Why? Because he has respect for people, and he says, all I want to do is your brain. I want you to tell me how to solve the problems. The moment you engage someone at that level, Stan, Everything changes. So Chris why are is getting we it doing done. that now? Why? I mean, is because it we don't have leaders with lead, who lead with intelligence. We don't have leaders that believe in solid principles. They want to. It's about acquiring power. The greatest leader in the world. If you ever read the book Good to Great, yep. there are two characteristics of the great leaders. Right? They are persistence and humility. Great leaders always deflect everything from them. They always say it's their people. This is one of the most powerful tenets of real, authentic leadership. You must be humble. You must realize that other people have capacity. But as long as you think you're the answer, you're going to lose long term. You may win short term, but that's not what I'm interested in. I want a long term result. Okay, next one. High unemployment. We, you know, when, when you listen to just about every economist around the world today, mm -hmm. they, will, they will talk about lots of different things, but it comes down to the unemployment rate is very, very high, mm -hmm. much higher in reality than the numbers that we hear. Right, especially in absolutely. The so what's your solution for unemployment? Well, let's just take, for instance, I'll give you an example with me. I'm in the middle of a $5 million building project, and I pull the plug on it. Why? Because I don't trust what the government's doing. I don't know what's coming around the corner. I don't know what new taxation is going to happen or anything else. But, of course, if I would have gone through with that $5 million building project, I would have employed another 50 people in my new manufacturing plant. I would have employed 100 people to build the building, probably. Lots of people would have been employed off of me investing that capital. But me, like many other people, and I know a lot of business people all over the world, let alone in the United States, who are doing the same thing as me. We're pulling back our capital. We're afraid. Well, we don't trust what the government's doing. Well, real the estate answer, got to be too high, though. Real, what? Real, the, the, uh, the price of real estate, especially residential real estate, got to be way too high, and it was artificially inflated through absolutely. mortgages that never should have been issued. Of course, because the government manipulated the funds, for sure. Well, that, that while is the a government problem. manipulated the funds, there were a lot of people who called themselves Republicans who were making just a ton of money. So again, it's both sides were involved. Well, well you, there's no argument for me on that. Okay. The point is, we need to apply principles of sustainability, and those principles are: we know historically that when taxes are low, people take their money and can invest it more eloquently and more efficiently mm -hmm. than the federal government can, and that can stimulate a lot more. It's two to one actually. Your dollars can can accomplish two to one over what the government's dollars can. The bottom line is, we need to put money back in the hands of entrepreneurs and risk takers. People like me are backing off. We don't trust what the government's doing. Well, that leads right into that government policies don't help small businesses. And then when the stimulus package came out, yeah. it was aimed at the largest businesses. And then what it ultimately happened is because there was no requirement that they loan to people like you, instead they went and they borrowed, yeah. uh, borrowed money from the feds at, at zero and then invested it's in the free, the free market weeds the bad people out and allows the good people to thrive. Well, this isn't a free market. This is a bought and paid for market. I, 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 that's the whole problem. The government needs to back out. I trust the free market. When someone competes with me, Stan, it is the most beautiful thing in the world. It forces me to do a better job. I'm not intimidated by that. I love it. Competition is wonderful. It allows me to move to the next level. I understand that historically to be a great principle. And I apply that. So are you saying that government should have competition? 
everyone should have competition. Absolutely. Who com who competes with government? I, I guess is is the question. And I'm and I well the I, pro the, the the real issue is 95 percent of what goes on in our country should be driven by the free market. The government has its role. Certainly, it has to defend our country and our liberties. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Those roles it should play and it should do those effectively. It operates a judicial system. We also have a. a the, free, the government that operates an educational system that is doing a horrific job of doing it. I think if we applied, you want to know some op options of competition, sure. let's let the free market compete with the government on education. And two things would happen. Either the educational system that was run by the government would get better or it would wither. Either way, our children will get a better education. And that we need to do because our only obligation stand is to the customer. And in that particular example, you know who the customer is? The child. Yep. And we must be obligated to the customer, and that is the child. Is there room in, in all that you, that you say and all that you want to do to take care of those who really are, have, would have a very difficult time taking care of themselves? That is the beauty of America. My wife and I, you know, I got chastised the other day by someone who knows me because my wife and I are very generous and we give away a lot of money and help a lot of people. And I don't tell that story. And that is the beautiful thing about America. We are the most generous and benevolent people in the world. And to take that and rob that experience from me, because now the government has to step in and do that, is wrong. This is our obligation as human beings to take care of one another. And the government stepping in and taking care of every person for every situation robs me of my opportunity to do it. And it's my obligation as a human being to do that. Well, there were principles applied like that in mm -hmm. the Reagan administration. Mm -hmm. Uh, when and, and during during a time where there were a lot of people who were really seriously mentally ill, mm -hmm. ultimately came out on the streets because there was no money to take care of them anymore, and you know so what, that's the story. And you know what happened from there, and mm -hmm. so we we still have that. We did a very very poor job of taking care of Vietnam veterans when we got back. Right at this point in time, there there was more emphasis on taking care of our veterans who were coming back from the Middle East. They are they are still having incredible PTSD problems. I mean, is that, is that up to me to take care of them, or is that up to the government to take care of them? I think nothing can do it better than the private citizen. Certainly, the government has a role in this. I'm not saying the government is completely devoid, but to the extent that they're involved in it now, it's not effective. Okay. Let's go to a video. This is the latest ad. Well, not the latest ad, but this is an ad from your site. Are we ready? And we that? write these videos ourselves. I'm not a career politician. Okay. As a businessman, my company, FastCap, is competing on the world market and creating manufacturing jobs. I learned to live within my means when my wife and I asked my dad for a loan to buy our first home. He said, no, buy only what you can afford. I've never forgotten that lesson. Unfortunately, it's a lesson the politicians have forgotten or they never learned. As Senator, common sense values will guide me to deliver the best results for you and your family. I'm Paul Akers, and I approve this message.